Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to share some uh, cooling things that I use for the Peltier cooling. Uh, I thought to share these things to you because uh, I developed some ideas and maybe some of them can be useful for you. So I, I thought that why not make a video and share all these things. So as you can see there are several different cooling equipment uh, crowded on this small uh, wooden uh, plank. So actually this plank which you can see here I bought them by accident because I wanted to build a shelf but uh, these were uh, in the wrong size but I did not want to bring them back because uh, I wanted to uh, use them for my uh, buildings or my tools. So I bought new shelves which are in the correct size but uh, I kept these things so, for example, I can use them as sort of a base plate to build uh, something on them. And as long as I don't drill too much holes or don't uh, put too much screws in it, I can uh, recycle them several times. But this particular plank uh, will be used only for water cooler uh, setup or Peltier cooling setup. So, uh, what is happening here? is that you can see a whole bunch of uh, tubes or hoses and a lot of uh, air cooling and water cooling related parts. So first of all, let's start from the corner here because nowadays those are my most important uh, parts. So let's just start with this. So this is basically uh, a normal regular uh, CPU cooler. It's some Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Pro. This is not an advertisement, I just bought this because this was one of the cheapest uh, which I could find. Uh, to remove this uh, fan it's relatively easy, so you just uh, see that there is an edge and there is a sort of a hook which grabs into this edge. So you just have to like, uh, yeah, drag it off. I don't want to try it now because it has quite sharp edges, but uh, yeah, it's relatively easy. Mm, and then as you can see, uh, there is a similar fan on that guy, but uh, actually I have two of this and I removed the fan from the other and put it on that, but uh, that comes later. So you can see that uh, it has a pre-installed uh, heat or thermal grease and also you can see that it has this kind of uh, metal parts which are used uh, for the mounting bracket. So uh, I use this kind of uh, stuff as a heat load and not as cooling and the main reason behind that is that uh, this area is 35 by 35 millimeters so this is not enough for my Peltier devices because they are 40 by 40 millimeters so I cannot cool the wall surface area of the uh, Peltier device so then this comes into the game. So as you can see there is just a rubber band here, nothing else and then you can see that this just comes off. But uh, this is basically the main part uh, which, which is of our interest so I just remove it. So you can see there is a fan in between this 8 or 9 centimeters and uh, the heat flow or sorry the air flow is in this direction so that's why I put this thing here. And you can see that uh, this has six uh, heat pipes. And then you can see that this has much wider uh, air surface area in both directions. Actually, uh, I can put the 4x4 four four on almost exclusively on the copper part. Of course, there are like small, uh, narrow, empty spots here, but uh, like when that uh, part starts, that is already over 40 millimeters. So I can fit the wall Peltier unit on this flat uh, surface and that's very good. So when I do the tests, I mainly use this uh, device. So I have this uh, thing installed it, installed on it like this. And then cold air comes out, uh, comes in in this part side and then goes out here. So this is quite nice. But then, um, recently I started to have some issues 
and I thought that okay I should go back uh, to water cooling but I was not satisfied with my water cooler setup so today I bought some new parts and uh, I also uh, upgraded some older parts but the new thing that I bought is this uh, T uh, T prof T pipe or I don't know what's the exact name but uh, as you can see so there's a T-shaped uh, pipe so the water goes in yeah three directions there's a valve here and another fitting and this fitting is screwed on on this uh, T uh, pipe uh, those are actually for different purposes so this T pipe is for water and these uh, things with this nice end uh, I don't remember the English name of these things Mm, those are screwed on and these are for air uh, machines so for example air driven uh, pistols for painting and uh, things like that but uh, in this case I use it for water it's a low pressure water so it doesn't matter so why I built uh, this into my uh, water system is because I was always struggling with the uh, fittings. So when I wanted to remove the water, uh, I had to uh, break the, let's say, circuit somewhere, and it was always uh, a big trouble to uh, remove because if I wanted to remove the hose from one of these kind of fittings, then uh, I was always uh, struggling to remove and put it back because the fitting is so tight that it's just quite annoying. But then here I can get rid of the water uh, and it's much less uh, trouble and, and it's, it makes it very simple. So I just put this on here and I fitted it with a ziplock and whenever I, get, I want to get rid of the water I just turn the valve and the water comes out here, most of the water. So what happens is that uh, the water exits the pump and then goes into this uh radiator and then the cold water or, or the cool down water goes on the, uh, through this pipe here and then it gets in here and what you can see the cold side is blue there and the hot side is red and then the red comes out like let's say five six centimeters uh, pipe and then there is a flow indicator this is not a flow meter so it will not measure the amount of water which is going through this but this uh, yellowish greenish thing is rotating inside this uh, acrylic or plexi box and uh, then it indicates that there is a flow but which is useful for us is that there is a thermometer here and there is a, a LCD which shows us the uh, temperature so basically here I can measure the outlet temperature of the uh, hot or warm water I don't know how precise it is but uh, it is something and then uh, the water goes and reaches this part of course and then goes back to the main uh, reservoir or tank uh, so I can basically push out most of the water which is uh, entering this tube from the radiator and uh, then I can do some stuff like uh, lifting uh, this tube a little bit or blowing into this tube and get uh, rid of most of the water. Of course if I want to get rid of the water from the radiator then I have to remove the radiator because the connections are in the top of it. It's not on the screen unfortunately but uh, believe me so it's in, on the top. Uh, I did not want to make it uh, upside down um, but maybe I should do that to get rid of uh, more water but then my problem with that is if I uh, turn it upside down and uh, the connections which is like this so these kind of uh, pipe endings can be found on the uh, radiator as well so if those are in the bottom I cannot get rid of the air bubbles because here uh, I just showed show it on this side so if the uh, connections are in the bottom the air bubbles will always go up to the top to the top of this radiator so after a while I will start to collect a lot of lot of uh, bubbles in the top and uh, that will basically push down the level of the water inside the radiator 
That means that uh, you are not using the wall effective area of the radiator. But if I have the connections on the top, then all the bubbles will come actually through this uh, hose and then they will end up in the tank. And here there is a funny nice funnel for this uh, tank to fill it up. So here uh, the bubbles basically just uh, come out because they are made of air. So that's very simple and uh, I think it's a nice uh, idea. So coming back to the radiator, uh, someone recently or not recently but not so long back ago was commenting on my other video and uh, that person said that <laughs> the fans are uh, installed in the wrong way so I now installed it in the right way so the air is going through the the, the fans are blowing the air into the radiator and not sucking out from the radiator. I can tell you it doesn't matter, you don't get any significant difference, maybe there can be something, but airflow is airflow. Whether it is going through in that direction or this direction, it doesn't matter. At least for this particular system, I can promise you that uh, it doesn't give you any kind of uh, difference. And uh, now, as this setup uh, became so easy to handle, I can actually test it. So I will test it, I will uh, connect my most powerful uh, 15 ampere patio unit to heat up the water significantly and uh, then we will see whether uh, this solution is the good when the air goes into the uh, radiator or when the air is being sucked through the radiator. So uh, sometimes they refer to these techniques as pull and push. So we will see what's the best. But uh, now we have this kind of setup and we stick to this. So I talked about this kind of valve and then the radiator, the flow indicator and the thermometer, uh, the air coolers and uh, let's just talk about these cables. So of course we have three electric devices here or four to be precise. We have this. 12 volts. Uh, actually it accepts quite a wide range. I think it's something like 6 to 24 volts but uh, 12 is fine for me. So 12 volts and then we have a pump and we have the two fans. And actually uh, when I replace the fans or I flip them I removed uh, the connection to the LED lights which are installed in the fan because it's an annoying uh, blue light. And I just don't need this RGB crap. So yeah, uh, I removed it. And uh, so we have these four devices. So what I had, I had these uh, ferrules and I have this kind of nice, um, I don't know the name of it, but uh, you can like have the ferrules pushed inside them and then they stuck there because there is a sort of a clamping mechanism inside this uh, thing but it makes it permanent, so you cannot really remove it. You have to destroy the connections, but uh, for me, uh, it doesn't matter. So we have this very nice connection, and then I just have this kind of 2.1 millimeter uh, jack plug, so I can plug it in and uh, run it. So let's uh, try it. So I have a power supply here, and hopefully I can plug it in properly and uh, see it work. So it works. And, uh, yeah, I will stop talking in a while, but uh, for a while, but you can see that it is running. You can see that this is uh, working. No leakage because I tested everything before and I tested for leakages. Uh, one thing which is bad with this flow indicator, and you have to be very careful about it if you use it. Uh, I don't know if it's visible on the video, but there is an air bubble here and we can get rid of that, of course. But what can happen is that air bubbles uh, gather where you have the thermometer and then uh, that uh, creates some kind of air pocket there. So actually you cannot be sure that you are measuring the water's temperature because you have that air pocket between the real circulating uh, water and uh, the tip of the thermometer. So what I suggest is that you should always have it something like this, like upside down, because the air bubbles will, of course, uh, will avoid the tip of the thermometer. So that's uh, something to uh, be aware of. And then here, 26.6 degrees. It's quite warm today, uh, I would say. So 
I'm not surprised that the water temperature is like this uh, high, let's say. But uh, this is what we have. So we cool this uh, block here, which is a 4 by 4 centimeter aluminum block. And then uh, that's all. So I just shut up for a few seconds so you can hear how loud is this uh, pump. And uh, the, temp the, the distance between the microphone and the pump is roughly 60 centimeters. So, uh, I think it's not so loud. The loudest component is of course the pump. And one thing that you have to make sure that sometimes the pump can also suffer from the air bubbles. So in between the propellers or how it is called, uh, the, the fins inside the uh, pump which are pushing the water, uh, some air can be trapped there. And you have to like slap it a little bit. Or sometimes it's a good idea if you have some uh, uh, stationary bubbles to just quickly stop and then start again and sometimes the inertia of the water just pushes out some extra bubbles so that that can be quite uh, helpful and then uh, let me finalize these things I haven't talked about these parts here so let me tell you what are these so I have my standard 4x4 four four, uh, aluminium block and it has a very simple shape inside it, so I, I show it on this. So the water comes in, takes a left turn, goes down, and then uh, takes a right turn. Now I'm just uh, telling from the water's perspective. So goes up, left turn, left turn, and then uh, right turn, and then right turn again, and then left turn, left turn. So it comes out. So there are no some there aren't any very fine structures inside these things and this is also a 4x4 unfortunately it is I think anodized or painted so it's not that shiny as that one but uh, I think it would not uh, destroy the uh, capability of uh, heat transfer so that's fine but uh, yeah so we have our standard 4x4 and then we have an 8x4 so this can accommodate uh, two or four if you use both sides, uh, Peltier units. And then we have the 12 by four. So you can put three on each side. So six in total. So this is what I have. Uh, you can see it like this. And uh, that, this is uh, quite nice. So I usually use this. And uh, then what I want to show you, I bought a set which actually comes with this guy here, but then there is this or there are these two fans uh, I have screws and other things for uh, with it but uh, I don't want to show those because those are not significant but you have these two heat sinks and then uh, you can buy also this and I think this was like uh, ten dollars so it was quite cheap uh, because you have two uh, four by four centimeter fans that's already some nice you have these two heat sinks and then you have this guy and of course some screws and also some thermal grease. Uh, check the description because I put the product there. You don't have to buy them through those links. Uh, you can look it up at least. But uh, what's the purpose of this? So this is uh, this is made for two patties. So you have to install one on each side or it's suggested like that. So you uh, now imagine that we have the two patties here. Sandwich it here like this and how the way of installing should be the following so the hot sides are touching of course this because you cool the hot side and then the cold sides are in contact with these uh, with these heat sinks and then you use the fans uh, to run the air through these things and uh, then you can use this as an as a small air cooler so not an air conditioner before someone tries to build an air conditioner uh, I will tell you why it is a bad idea, but uh, you can use them as an air cooler inside an enclosed box. So, for example, in a polystyrene box, uh, you can use it as a cooling box. So if you go down to the beach and uh, want to bring some cold beer or something, then uh, this is a good idea to consider. But air conditioner not. Why? Because if it's cold, 
and it can be very cold. Uh, first of all, if you trap all the moisture in the air, and uh, maybe if your uh, patty or your circuit around this is not uh, properly sealed, then uh, you will have an electric uh, short circuit. And of course you don't want that, but that's not a big problem. But if it's uh, going below zero degrees, the heat sink is uh, below zero, then ice starts to form uh, because of the captured humidity on the surface. And uh, after a while, you have more and more ice, maybe the fins uh, will be totally surrounded by ice, and that uh, drastically uh, decreases the chance of uh, the air to get cooled down, because the there is a barrier, which is the ice, between the cold side and the air, basically. So you don't want that. And you cannot do, or you cannot make, uh, really a air conditioner out of this because you just cannot in, in the very 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 best case if you put two uh, TEC 12 7 15 units so the 15 ampere units those are the uh, let's say highest power units uh, then in that case you can probably provide something between 200 230 watts, I don't exactly remember, uh, cooling power, 200 watts of cooling power. A regular AC has 2000 watts, so you need 10 of this uh, to replicate the same cooling power as a, home, uh, as a normal AC for your home has. So you need 10 of this, and then good luck cooling 10 of uh, that unit. So the thermal output of those units per unit is 225 watts. So from this sandwich, if you have two TEC 1215 inside uh, this sandwich, you have, let's say, uh, let's round it up, 500 watts. And you have 10 of this, so you have, you have to put 5000 watts somewhere. I have a video, please check that, where I did these calculations and uh, everything. And I clearly explained why cannot you build an air conditioner with Peltier units. You can. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but it's so inefficient and uh, unfeasible that it is just unrealistic. So yeah. So you could see my setup. So these are the air cooling, once again. Uh, these are just some additional parts if I want to experiment with some other units and then uh, we have the water cooling and uh, why I built this again because uh, I want to do some more experiments and then and I want to have a very reliable hot side temperature from the patty device so I will try to uh, see if I can now use this water cooling again for these purposes and I also had some idea about uh, stacking several patty devices let's say three so maybe in the future I will also do that, uh, I mean in the near future, because now I have this air cooling and uh, I think that I can do something very, very unique with that. But uh, that's, that's, for, that's enough for this video that I explained and I hope this was useful and you learned something and if you have any questions regarding these cooling things just uh, leave a comment please and uh, I will try to answer them. And uh, if you want, you can like discuss it in the comment section. So I'm really happy to answer those questions. So this is uh, everything regarding my cooling system. And I hope you like this. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, please. And see you in the next video.